Thank you very much. And good evening, everyone. Many thanks to Mark and Bucky for inviting me to be part of this event. I'm delighted to be here. I'm going to speak for 15, 20 minutes about the power of connection and why I think this has been particularly relevant in 2020. As many of you may know, I'm not working in a school at the moment, but I do connect with a huge number of teachers, leaders, support staff, governors in schools and colleges and education establishments of all types. And I have huge admiration for how they have all stepped up in the most extraordinary circumstances this year. I think the education profession has been quite amazing as we've navigated COVID as a society, working phenomenally hard to support students, their families and staff across our organisations and actually reaching out to everyone who's part of the wider school community. It's been superb, but it hasn't come without a cost and I recognise how exhausted everyone is and what a strain educators have been under. And in the light of that, how incredible is it that you're here tonight at the end of a long day, at the end of a tough term towards the end of, of the year from hell. So just take a bow. The fact that you're here is, is brilliant. One of the things that I know many have found draining and difficult and frustrating is how the pandemic and the restrictions we've had to accommodate have meant that connecting with each other in the way we usually would, face to face, inside and outside our organisations, has been so much tougher. In some cases, it's been almost impossible. So many of the people I know have talked about how what they've really missed is the informal chatting and the support and the friendships, which are such an important part of how all our ed educational establishments normally work. And also so many of our routines and traditions, for example, especially now as we approach Christmas, just haven't been possible in their usual form. But I have been really impressed by the creativity and the imagination that have gone into trying to make special events happen anyway and keep these traditions going. I've also been aware that in the absence of our usual channels of communication, our normal ways of interacting with each other, we've utilised many alternative methods of connecting, collaborating, bolstering and encouraging each other. And this has been something else that I've found incredibly positive this year. So I've been struck by the sense that although the pandemic has obviously led to a great deal of frenetic activity, one of the reasons people are so tired now, at the same time, what we've been through this year, I think, has also given us pause. In some ways, it's motivated us to think about what really matters, what is really important to us, what drives us. I think it's encouraged us to focus on what Jeff Barton from Askell called the human stuff. And that's a phrase that I think has really resonated this year. And I would say that how we connect with each other is a really important part of the human stuff. So this evening, I'm going to share with you four things which have made me think and which I hope you will find interesting. And they're all about making connections. The first is a piece from Nezreen Malik, who wrote about some of the lessons from lockdown, which she hopes we won't lose sight of when some kind of normality resumes. I'm going to read an extract from this article and Katie has put up the link. So you have the link here if you want to read the full thing later. In the slowing of life over the past eight months, I've picked up many threads truncated email conversations with old friends, missed catch-up calls that were never rescheduled, thank you notes that sat half written. With the suspension of daily activity and normal life, an entire hinterland of dormant relationships has emerged. I worry something will be lost in the rush back to life as it was. Is there a way to merge what we have discovered through lockdown and isolation over the past few months with whatever comes next, rather than consigning everything we've experienced to the past. I think it's a brilliant article. 
I know that this year I've connected with some of the people I love and those whose company and conversation I find energizing and uplifting much more than I normally would have done under usual circumstances when I would have been otherwise occupied. So I understand what Nezreen is saying when she talks about picking up the threads. I've seen some of these people face to face, usually for long walks, sometimes in the park with a bottle. Yes, it has come to that. But in other cases, I've written more letters. I've had a lot more online video conversations. I've made more phone calls. I've sent more texts and cards, WhatsApp messages and emails. I've definitely spent much more time checking in and catching up than I normally would have done. Perhaps because through the pandemic, we've all been more mindful about checking in with those that we care about. I've also had more contact with my neighbours and the village community I live in. I know them all better now. And I have to say that despite all the fear, anxiety and frustration, I know we've all been experiencing this year. And I don't want to downplay that in any way. I know how tough that's been. Despite all that, there's still been something joyful about that connection and picking up those threads. Secondly, one of the professional things I've been involved in this year was Collective Ed's Knowledge Exchange event with Rachel Lofthouse and the team at Leeds Beckett in connection with Growth Coaching International and Instructional Coaching. And this knowledge exchange was all about having better conversations and that really made me thoughtful. It was a four week process and there were lots of video conversations that took place in that time. And in one of these video sessions, Lou Mycroft and Kay Sidebottom talked about the importance of properly listening and not interrupting. And that struck me. At one point in the video, Lou said something like, sometimes we just need to shut up. And that's something I really, really need to get better at. So as a result of that, I've given some careful thought to this issue of interrupting. And that includes not only verbal interruption, but how electronic interruption adds to the problem. I don't know about you, but I have friends who will break off a conversation because of vibration on their Fitbit tells them they have a message from someone else. Really? Lou recommended this piece from Nancy Klein. Thank you, Katie. Nancy Klein's new book, The Promise That Changes Everything, is all about making a promise not to interrupt. And Nancy Klein shows how much stronger our connections could be if we made that promise. She also talks about how important it is that in our interactions with one another, we seek to understand rather than seeking to convince. And that made me think of how much better Twitter could be if more of us resolved to do that. Seek to understand, especially when we disagree, rather than simply seeking to convince the other person that we are right. This is an extract from Nancy's article where she describes what might happen if we promised not to interrupt. Imagine the relief, the possibilities, the dignity. You now have ground that is yours unassailably. This is for you. Time to think, to feel, to figure out what you really want to say, to say it, to consider it, to change it, to finish your sentences, to choose your own words, to become, because you can trust the promise, a bit bolder, even eloquent, to become you. And because you know I will not interrupt you, you will want, when you finish, to know what I think too, even if we disagree deeply. You open your heart, and because you in turn promise not to interrupt me, I open mine. 
So I wrote a blog post myself called Only Connect, where I considered how important connection has been this year and how we may have connected differently, but how our capacity to adapt how we communicate just reflects how crucial connection is to us. The post was inspired by the week of teacher five a day slow chats, which began with Connect on the Monday, the 26th of October. And in the post, I reflected on some of the connection opportunities which have arisen this year. So, for example, the fact that in the absence of a UK face to face event for this year's Women Ed Conference, which would have been the sixth annual face to face conference Women Ed has organised, instead they arranged a global online event instead. And it was amazing. So people connected who wouldn't have been able to fly to the UK to join a face to face event. It was even better. And it was to me a classic example of how we can take a challenge and we can turn it into an opportunity. I also wrote in the blog about how as so many things have been put on hold this year, I've had time to read more and to tweet about what I've read. And I've written more, I've written about education, I've written more blog posts, and I've also written some fiction, which is something I've wanted to do for a long time. This year I've found the space. And I don't know whether it will ever be published, but I'm proud of what I've written and I've really enjoyed the process. And the process of writing some fiction has actually led to richer, more connections. The last thing I want to share with you this evening is a five minute video. It's produced by the girls school in Bedford where I was the head for 10 years. It's 10 years since I left headship now and that seems amazing. I feel like I was a head forever and it feels like two minutes since I stepped down from headship. Real blink of an eye stuff. But it's good still to connect with the school and to see what's happening there now. The school has gone from strength to strength, I think, and I feel really proud of that. I feel proud that my successor and now her successor have built on the legacy I inherited and contributed to during my decade at the school. And the school is doing brilliantly. So I hope you'll find five minutes to watch this video after the teach meet is over. It's a performance of Bill Withers' Lean On Me, to which many girls and staff across the school, junior school and senior school, contributed. And apart from the fact that I think it's a really uplifting performance, the message of stay connected and leaning on one another seems so appropriate right now. And I was also interested when I watched the video to see a young woman, a young member of staff at the school now, who I remembered as a pupil at the school when I was the head. I taught her in year seven when she was 11 years old, and now she's a teacher there herself. It's all part of the cycle of connection. As many of you know, leadership is definitely my thing. Leadership would be my mastermind specialist subject. So I want to finish this by considering the power of connection from a leadership perspective. I want to say that leaders at all levels need to connect with one another more at the moment than they've ever done, face to face when they can, but virtually if they can't, because we can draw strengths and even inspiration from one another. We might learn from others' ideas and example, and others will learn from us. So, for example, considering what others are doing to compensate for the lack of those informal day to day conversations across the organisation, we might find that what's helping somebody else where could also work for our context. But it has to be right for our context. And we need not to feel overwhelmed if we're aware that lots of places are doing things that we're not doing. You need to decide what is right for your context. You know your schools, your staff, their capacity, what they might need 
and what they would benefit from. And I hope you know what you need and would benefit from and that you're able to find it. So leaders at all levels, I hope you continue to be sustained and supported through the power of connection. And I know that you will support and sustain others in your turn because it's crucial for you. It's crucial for those you lead and for your leadership peers. If you reach out to them, I know they'll reach out to you. So thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak to you all and to share a few things tonight. I will stay to the end of the teach meet. Um, I might well release one or two tweets. You never know, Mark and Bookie. Um, so just final words to everybody. Enjoy your connections, feed them, nurture them and just watch them grow. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jill. And oh, there you yeah, go. Look, she's amazing. put the festive antlers on. Well, done. yes, I'm glad you did. Fantastic. Well done. Now, the chat's been going wild, Jill. People that's like, you know, the message is really resonating with people. Um, from uh, <clears throat> Zena talking about how she loves writing letters. Um, uh, and we've got Karine Latham, head teacher from a primary school in Northern Ireland, sharing about how she does the after the calls. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you know Corinne as well. Um, yeah. We've got so many lovely comments. I'm just trying to pick out some other ones. Uh, we're joined by uh, our, our mutual friend, uh, Mary Myatt, as well. Uh, so welcome uh, and thank you for joining us, uh, Mary. Uh, uh, Amy goes on to talk about uh, how important connections are. Uh, and she's loving what you're sharing. Um, yeah, Sarah's been doing the same sort of thing, um, talking about the positives of lockdown. The ability to attend events that you wouldn't normally be able yeah. to do and in fact you know things like the project i do with bookie on uk Age stories has only really been possible mm -hmm. because of the extra time we, we've gained through some of the normal activities like traveling for work and things like that that have mm -hmm. happened so yeah, lots and lots of um positives um but thank you for for drawing all those sort of things together around the idea of connecting it's, it's so true and important isn't it bookie it certainly is. And I noticed a difference now that we're returning to normal or, you know, whatever it is. The, the time that we gained from, you know, like being at home, not having to travel, as you said, Mark, it, mm. it just realize, it makes you realise, one, what you can actually do with it. But I think, Jill, as you said, you know, the key message is about the connections and really hanging on to that. I connected more during lockdown mm. and had, you know, things that you've been meaning to do, but you never make the time to do. Yeah lockdown provided that and, and as you say there are a lot of challenges beyond that and I can see myself moving away from that because I just don't have the same amount of time that we had before so um yeah I think it's a really powerful message and thank you for sharing that with us yeah it's just those mindful connections something that both Bookie and I clocked because I, I noticed we both tweeted the exact same quote from oh, your <laughs> presentation Jill uh, which is where you said you seek to understand especially when we disagree yeah uh, rather than to convince you know yeah. and, and there are so many places and spaces virtual and other you know where th that sort of mindful approach to the connections you have to be people in the room being present in the room all those things are so important to enabling people to be able to actually connect like you've shared so uh, as bookie said thank you so much uh, for joining us and i think a perfect start to what i'm hoping is going to be an amazing evening uh, of, of sharing thank you so much for helping us uh, start the teach me in style drill thank you thank, thank you, you guys